I got this awesome question yesterday from one of our users uh, on YouTube asking about mixing and how I mix. And I appreciate that question because it's something I think a lot about. Um, I have sort of three small answers I want to give you. Um, mixing for me is all philosophical. It's not really a technical thing, even though we can get into that as well. Um, but there's sort of three overarching principles I go by. The first one is that I try to, or at least I used to have like one year I would dedicate to given disciplines. So it could be one year for counterpoint, one year for mixing. And back in 2007, back with Tomb Raider and stuff, um, it was all about for me to learn mixing. So I focused on mixing and learning to fix it in the mix. I became familiar with this old studio term called fixing in the mix. And for me, that was sort of the first realization. You fix it in the mix. You fix it while you make the music. You don't wait till later on with mastering and all that. And the reason for that is that you have a really, really good idea about what the end product is gonna sound like. And mastering is more a delicate exercise of just dialing in the small things right. But if you sort of wait and you're like, oh my God, I just need to get this out and I'm gonna wait till mastering, then you know you might be working in darkness or in the void. And I personally believe that fixing in the mix is the right way to go if you're looking for that higher quality type of scoring. So you know, fixing in the mix, it's kind of like making a dish and you're using all the ingredients in real time and you're not cheating with salt and pepper in the end. You know the deal. Um, the other part for me that is really important as well is the exercise of the ear. Uh, for me, sometimes I find my intellect is sort of battling my intuition. Um, I heard this beautiful analogy from Steve Zwaglione, one of the greatest instrumentalists in the world. I love that guy. Uh, he works with Thomas Newman and many others. Um, he said that often when they work together on the scores, that first take is really important. You grab that moment where you've never really been there before, but it's sort of what it was. Uh, your intellect has not distorted the way you compose. You're just in the moment, like dealing with the music. And for me, that's super important. I like to follow my intuition. I like to let my ear guide me more than my intellect. Whenever my intellect takes over, it's like, I'm not good enough, I wish I sounded like that. You know, the usual suspects of composer insecurities. But for me, like when I'm in the groove or in the flow, I just use my ear and that goes for the mix as well. I simply just listen to what sounds good. And granted, it might take some time to get the adjustments right, but um, there's an awesome quote by Max Martin, the great, great pop producer. Um, when he mixes, um, every element in the mix needs to stand out in the mix. If it's sort of down and muddy and all that, you remove it because it doesn't belong there. So when you mix, everything needs to have a purpose. Everything needs to sit in that perfect flower formation where all the petals are almost evenly structured. And then maybe a little bit of spike here and there so it stands out and you're working on your sound and your personal voice. So that's mixing for me. Um, and keep these questions coming. I love answering it for me. Like this is what I do all day long. But you know, thinking about it, uh, why don't we go into the doll? Let me just load up uh, HyperTools Equinox and just try to create a little composition and then I'll mix it in real time. And when the video is done, my mix is done. So you'll be hearing how I'm making different like decisions and trying to make sure that everything is cohesive and yet a little bit spiky. So yeah, I'll see you in the doll. Mm -hmm.